The reason we went, decided to go down this blended learning approach was not exactly entirely altruistic. It was somewhat driven by how the unit had evolved. So like many courses in the university, I suspect it uh, over the period of about five to seven years, the numbers grew from around 40 to 50 to in excess of 200. And then we realized we needed some sort of fundamental change to our assessment strategy as part of the course because we simply were, well, for want of a better term, drowning under the pile of marking that was required. There's the simple practical issue that, you know, if you have an exam at 10 o'clock, you have the marks by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So I made contact with iSolutions and they came down and actually gave a demonstration of question mark perception. And what I found really interesting was, I guess I thought it would be a fairly mundane set of survey style questions and it came as a kind of a real surprise that uh, it was much more flexible with hotspots, matrices, blank spaces, being able to put phase diagrams in there, uh, other, other detailed geological diagrams and get people to recognise which part of the phase diagram they need to be in. It is, is really powerful way of testing the students. So having had a demo and decided that's where I want to go, we used the programme to build a set of questions um, that we then used as, a, as part of the summative assessment. So question design was quite challenging. Using question mark perception, it's very easy to address much, a much greater proportion of the course. You, even get, you, you cover a much wider scope of the curriculum in the final assessment. And the challenge is then how deep you can go using your question strategies. So it's not just about writing a question that fits a, a questionnaire or a service style or a hotspot. It's trying to ensure that you still add a question that you thought was worth asking. I think that was, that was a little bit of a challenge. And then the number of questions was interesting because, to be perfectly honest, the first year we just simply didn't know. Of course, one of the joys of the system is you know exactly how long each student spends on a question, you know exactly how long they took down to the paper, and you get their overall marks and their marks for every question. So, that, so the second year we were very much able to adjust the paper in the light of that response. So, for example, we had a lot more, we added something like a third more questions because of We've seen how quickly people were completing the paper in the first instance. After initial concerns, there's nothing turned up in the uh, MEQs that has suggested there's, a, there's any problem with the methods of assessment. So it's been well received. The university's been really well organised in sorting out computer rooms that are invigilated. When there's been a problem with a question or a question's failed, the, 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 uh, you know, it's been rectified in fairly short order. So, I would encourage colleagues to adapt this approach if you have a large cohort at, I would say, an intermediate level. I'm not sure I'm, not sure I'm convinced myself this works at level three, four, where you might be looking for deeper, more discursive discussions, but levels one and two with large classes, I think you can ask demanding questions that uh, can realistically and properly assess the cohort you're, you're dealing with, but it, it's certainly... Uh, worth investing the time at the front end. There's always that front end investment. If you're only going to set this paper for one year, you'd never go to question mark perception. If you think you're in this for four or five years, it's definitely worth doing.